man, I'm so beautiful, son. All right, well, following that, I guess I'm the... No, seriously, I'm not being so sincere. Um, vulnerability and honesty are important. And um, it's what we write for. So I guess this next poem is for someone that has taught me to love my scars as well. Um, as someone that has always felt small and unlovable. Um, this is for my girlfriend. And um, is anybody in here in a long distance relationship? Anybody in here? It sucks, right? It freaking sucks. Ah, why? Why, Ocean? Why? Um, so <laughs> it really stinks. So this poem is, uh, yeah, whatever. So it's for you, Sarah, if you're watching. Well, you're watching a live stream, so. Ha, ah, surprise, I wrote this in your dining room. Okay. <laughs> She's like, what are you writing? I was like, it's poems for the show, you know. I like the environment and stuff, okay. Um, all right. I'm gonna do this. This is the tune that my tambourines and my knees play whenever we kiss. This is us watching a rerun of the London sunset from the comfort of your couch, your body slung across mine like a quiver of golden arrows. The Atlantic Ocean is approximately 4,105,000 feet long. On a good day, I can be mistaken for five foot 10. For the sake of my NBA dreams and fragile self-esteem, let's round that up to six feet. Because if we round that up to six feet, then it would only take approximately 36 billion Joshua's stretched out like a giant bridge of beard and brawn to traverse the gap between the shores of this gorgeous city and that rain-soaked island you call home. On most days, these sorts of numbers make me the world's saddest mathematician. So as of late, instead of poring over the equations that keep our heartbeats at ocean's length, I've been transcribing our silence into jazz chords. I figure, it's the easiest way to make music out of all this melancholy. So here goes, a blues for Sarah, my transatlantic love manifesto. Chapter one, how about we write a joint letter to the Department of Age and ask for a refund? All of those hours on Skype rebated into our skins, the tear marks on your cheek evaporated into food for the archive. I know that our physicist friends will tell us otherwise. We'll say that according to modern science, what we want is impossible with no jetpacks or time machines to boomerang our molecules back and forth across the sea. But maybe if you just close your enough, every airliner that travels over our heads will transform itself into a paper plane cast from my side of the classroom to yours. A simple message scrawled on the inside of its aluminum stomach. I do not know if this will work out in the end, but I have a daydream of your face being in very close proximity to my face at least once a day. And I know that that has to count for something. Chapter two. 79% of my love poems pay taxes to the empire of your lips. Which explains why on nights like this, I find myself dreaming of airports, of your black overcoat dancing like a smoke signal through the arrivals gate at JFK as I hand you a bouquet of azaleas and Joni Mitchell's blue album on vinyl. I could drink a case of you and still be on my feet, she says. And I cannot help but agree. Chapter three. There are no manuals for this. No French philosophers to postulate that perhaps love is a war on geography or that global warming is just the sun's willingness to meet us halfway, blurring the seasons together so that it doesn't seem like we've been apart for all that long. Summer and autumn, just two love-struck runaway trains colliding into a constellation of technicolor sparks. Maybe this poem is an arc. Maybe our future selves are waltzing together inside of its mahogany skin. Nothing but the muted whisper of raindrops to keep their rhythms aligned. Maybe wrinkles are just the ways that our bodies keep time. Maybe one day I will count the tally marks under your eyes and think it the most wondrous algorithm that has ever been graced by human hands. When we are old enough for that sort of arithmetic, I will be the world's happiest mathematician. I will say I have been a prisoner of your love since before time began. Your electrons are synonymous with my electrons. You are the Garden of Eden, 
my atoms were made for. <laughs> Chapter four. You are still my favorite thing about the ocean. I could swim the length of you, darling, and never have to breathe. 